the power and force of truth. What do we all know about the truth? It is easy to say truth. Oh, truth is just to tell what is truth. What is, okay, what is the right thing to do? Or what is the right thing to say? Then if we are a Christian, then you could say, okay, Jesus is the truth. God is the truth. Is that all there is to truth? Uh, there are some things that we need to know and discover about truth. Are we sure we know how powerful and how forceful truth is? I think this is one of the greatest deficiencies of our age and of our world. We know nothing about the truth. The concept of the truth is strange to us. For Christians, the only thing they know about the truth is you, the, you shall know the truth, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's the only thing we, we seem to know about the truth if we are Christians. Or oh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We don't know much about the truth. Is that all there is to be known and to be discovered about the truth? Let me tell you something about this method that I'm going to use to teach us the truth this week and the following weeks to come. You see, some people accuse me of not preaching the gospel because I don't quote the Bible all the time. And some people say, they are, you know, when they listen to my old messages, when I'm just, you know, quoting the Bible, yeah, that is good. But now, Pastor Sunday is just giving human wisdom. They don't know that some of these things that they call human wisdom, it is the wisdom of God that is being decimated and dissipated across the world in over thousands and thousands of years that has been distributed and has been revealed to thousands of men. Because if you are just waiting for you to get your own revelation fresh, from the Bible all by yourself. You will have to live for thousands of years for you to even get to know some of these things that have already been revealed to many people over the ages. And one thing with God is, He will not begin to reveal to you afresh the things that He had already revealed to people before you. He expects you to use your wisdom, to use your mind, and go out to look for and search for the revealed truth that are already near you on the earth. That is the sole reason why God told the rich man. You remember the rich, the, the story of the rich and, and Lazarus? That the rich man told was asking uh, Jesus, I and mean, he was asking Abraham that Abraham should send Lazarus back to the earth so that Lazarus will warn his relatives and his family members that about what he has seen in heaven so that they would not come to the horrible place where the rich man himself is and then the rich man and then abraham answered him and said well i'm sorry you know on earth where your relatives and family members are you have moses you have the preachers and the prophets if they cannot receive those messengers of god those prophets of god that are already on earth right now even if somebody comes from heaven to bring them the same gospel, they will still not receive it. What is the wisdom here that Jesus is trying to teach us in that story that he was telling us? The wisdom is this. If the revelation, the wisdom has already been released from heaven to the earth, if God has already released wisdom, people have caught it in different places. So if you are on earth now and now you are trying to say, well, I will not go and learn from another person. I will go to God direct. That God knows that that is pride. And God will not even pay attention to such a person. Because the wisdom you are looking for is already available with you on the earth. Go look for it. That's why in the Proverbs, it now tells us that wisdom is accessible to all. Wisdom is crying out. You go look for it. You go search for it. So there are a lot of wisdom that God has already... In fact, even uh, Solomon told us there is nothing new under the, under the sun. Everything God has already revealed to us, you, it takes wisdom for you to go in pursuit of that knowledge, of that understanding and of that wisdom. So when we are talking about the truth, 
I am sure that most people around us in our world today, we don't have the understanding of the truth. Truth is a strange concept to us. We all talk about the truth. We, we all mention the truth. We all seem to know the significance of the truth, but we don't understand the truth. Through the wisdom of ages that God has revealed through the Bible and through men that have discovered God in their own way. So, the power and force of truth. What is the power and force of truth? What is even the significance of the truth? And how do we apply truth in our own lives? How much do you understand the concept of the truth? Apart from just quoting, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Apart from that, what do you know? That I'm the way, the truth, and the life and the truth, or the truth and the life. Apart from the life, what? apart from that, what do you know about truth? Speak truth. Be honest. Is that what we know about truth? That is a big deficiency if that is all you know about truth. But listen closely. I am going to be teaching you about truth, like I said, every day. Every day, maybe for a whole month. At least for two weeks. By the time you discover what truth is, the power and the depth of the truth, you will understand the craziness of Pastor Sunday. You will now know, ah, there is a reason and there is an explanation behind this man's craziness so, it's like he's crazy, but now we understand. Because God himself is the truth. And if we don't understand the truth, it is impossible. The concept of the truth. If we don't understand the concept of the truth, it is impossible to truly understand God. But what is even more important is that without understanding the concept of the truth, it is basically impossible to please God. Because pleasing God by itself is living by the truth on a daily basis. And that is why truth is the ultimate standard that God is going to use to judge all of us. He said, in fact, at the point Jesus said, I will not judge you, I don't judge you. It is the truth that I've spoken to you that will judge you. Truth is what will judge. So when, that's when, that is the answer that I got for myself about the people who didn't hear the gospel or who belong to other religion or who are not Christians or who have never heard the gospel preached to them. I now, I am, I know the answer right now, how they will be judged. Before I didn't know the answer, always only God knows that. But now I know the answer. The answer is God is going to judge every man. Either you are a Christian, you are not a Christian, by your compliance to the truth. By how much you are able to make your life, arrange your life to comply with the truth by how much you have been able to make yourself to be submissive to the truth, to the truth and how much you have made the truth to become your supreme commander how much you have made yourself a servant and a slave of the truth so because I said I am a man that learned from as many sources as possible let me, let me say I will, read, I will read one scripture but this scripture will not be the first one that I would like to get my message from today. This, uh, this, this in this series. But the scripture is at least this for the sake of the religious people who are going to be here with me. In Second Corinthians thirteen, Second Corinthians thirteen seven to eight, Second Corinthians thirteen seven and eight verses seven and eight. Now I pray to God that you do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is honorable. Though we may seem disqualified, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. We can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So, the truth is supreme. The truth is universal. The truth is comprehensive. The truth is totality. If you can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth, it means the truth is supreme. And that's why Jesus said, it's not me that is going to judge you, it's the word, it's the truth that I've spoken to you that will judge you. 
The message of today is called the five levels of truth. The five levels of truth. I will start this message by telling you about a man you should all know about. About somebody you should all know about. I will actually tell you more about his story. I will tell you about a story that you should all know about. Neil Donald Walsh. Neil Donald Walsh. I think most of you have heard about Neil Donald Walsh. Have you heard of Neil Donald Walsh? Anybody has heard of Neil Donald Walsh? They have a film about him. He has a film about his book. He has a book that is in series. But don't worry about Don't worry we're looking for it now. If you worry looking for it now, you will miss out. Neil Donald Walsh is a man that got so frustrated with life and with God. He got so frustrated with existence, with inequality in life. He got depressed. He got uh, he got frustrated. He was down. He was down on his knees. He was at the low ebb of his life. You know, when people are ready to give up and he hated God, he was so angry at God. So we you know what he decided to do? He said, if you are if you are Allah, if you are existing, God. If you are existing, oh Lord, if you are, if there is God and you are there, I am going to attack you with all, I am going to come to you with all my questions. I'm going to attack you with all the questions that I have, that I have. So he wrote a letter to God with all his frustrations, with all his anger. And with all his questions. And as he was writing all that. Questions to God. He finished writing the letters to God. God appeared. As it, by, behind him. At the right hand side. And I know what that means. For me personally. Because when I was seeking for God in the university. Or dormitory. In Ki Minsk, Ukraine. I mean Minsk, Belarus. God will always appear. At the right hand of my hand. Shoulder. He will stand behind me and I will be hearing him answering my questions. The same experience as this man. I knew that was God who appeared to him. But he said a voice. But he knew it was God immediately. But, but every all the questions that he had, I don't know how many hundreds of them or whatever, all the questions that he had, answers were just coming from this voice. But not voice like you are hearing my voice. But these are like voice in his spirit, in his mind, in his thought. Like that's the way it happened to me too. So he started writing all these things down. As a result, he got answers to all his questions and queries to God. All his frustrations, all his... You know, when you are desperate enough, when you are desperate enough seeking for God. You know, we are seeking for God not when we go to church. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we just go to church to just do as a tradition. When you are going to see for God as tradition, you cannot get God's attention until you are desperate. Only desperate men get a hold of God. And that is the secret why I decided to be going to do along with God. Solitude. It is when you are desperate that you would rather die than not hear from God. You are ready to pay any price. You are ready not to eat. You are ready to do anything. You are ready to close yourself down, to be in solitude for a year, a month, a two, two months, two weeks. Anything that is necessary. That is where God comes appearing. He comes knocking. So this man was at that stage. This man, Neil, was at that point when he was so desperate for God. It was only God that could deliver him. No man. So God appeared and started giving him answers. And then he was writing everything down, everything down. And the result of what he wrote down and all the answers that he got became a series of books with all questions that humanity could have and all God's answers in all, for unbelievable questions. And 
The series of books are called Conversations with God. Conversations with God. And as a result of that book, there was a film, an Hollywood film that was shot about this on the basis based on this book. Conversations with God. But I'm not, if you want, you could, you know, you could examine that, you could talk more about that later on. I mean, you could go and research that if you want. But what I'm after is what I want to talk to you today is about the answer that God gave him when he asked the question about the truth. Where will you get answer to such a question? Where will you get answers to such a question? Truth. So he was asking God, what is truth? And how do I live by the truth? You will be interested in the answers. I will just put them, give you, give them to you in, in concept. It's, but the, that's what I'm just sharing with you, that this whole idea, I mean, the whole thing is, is from that conversation with God. But I will explain them. I will, you know, use my scriptures and my own understanding to really digest them to you. But, you know, when he was asking this, God said, are you sure you really want to know what you are asking? Are you sure you really want to know about the truth? Are you sure? Then God, ah, just like a rain, opened heaven upon him. And this is, and people say, you don't read the book, just read the Bible. You have just lost. You are just losing now. Because God talks to people every day. God uses men all the time. Read the Bible. Use the Bible to judge whatever you are reading and you are saying. But read other people's books as well. God uses men. God can even use animals. So, the five levels of truth, I think this is one of the most profound revelations that all of us will ever get to know about the truth. I personally think these five levels of truth, I know exactly they are from God. And I know maybe we'll never be able to have a better clarity on truth than what God revealed to this man. So, what are the five levels of truth? What should I do? What do you prefer that I do? Should I just mention them first and then explain them later? Or I should mention them and explain, mention one and explain. I think I will mention one and explain. The first level of truth, the five levels of truth. There are five levels of truth. The first level of truth says the first level of truth is the truth you tell is the truth you tell yourself about yourself <laughs> amazing it is the it is the truth you tell yourself about yourself can i have you come or oh, you're busy okay dalina yeah come there so let's say this is Galena. This is you. Any one of you who is there. Okay. Look at, look at, I'm looking at you. Look at Galena now. You know yourself, Galena. But you know all of us. We know ourselves, but we don't really know ourselves. You only begin to know yourself when you begin to look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself the truth. Not about what is going on. Not about what mommy and daddy do, do, did right or did wrong. Not about your country. Not about your desires, your wish. You begin to discover yourself and to know yourself. When you look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself the hardcore truth. Yes, I can blame my mother. I can blame my father. I can blame my sisters. But the truth is that even me, I'm not bad. So I don't want to think about my brother, my sister, my mother, my daddy, you know, now. Let me think about myself. Let me just leave me alone. Leave me alone. Let me just look. But some of us have got into such a bad place that we don't even, we have lost the ability. We don't even have the skills to look at ourselves anymore. We don't even know how to do it anymore. We, it's even difficult for us. We have avoided ourselves all our lives. Many of us have avoided our life, ourselves all through our lives. We have run away from ourselves. We have run away from looking at the mirror of who we really are. Because we don't love the truth. 
For you to be able to tell yourself the truth about yourself, you must love the truth. You must love the truth more than you love yourself. You must love the truth more than you love yourself. You must love the truth more than you love yourself. You must love the truth more than you love yourself. You first of all must love the truth more than you love yourself before you could look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself the truth. Most of us, we avoid confronting ourselves. Most of us, we run away from confrontation. We even hate the word confrontation. We don't like the word confrontation. We don't want to confront even other people, which is easier. But confronting yourself about the core truth about your life and reality, that takes the truth. That takes loving the truth above yourself. Because the truth, to tell yourself the truth about yourself will be uncomfortable. To tell yourself the truth about yourself will bring pain. To tell yourself the truth about yourself will make you discomfortable, will bring you discomfort. To tell yourself the truth about yourself will mean to be humble. To tell yourself the truth about yourself will mean to be broken. To be broken before God and to admit your faults your imperfections, your frailties, that you are fallible. And that is why only people that have, are in love with the truth could see God. That is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, in the, in the um, what do you call it, in the Beatitudes, that only those who have a clean heart will see God. To have a clean heart is to love the truth. When you love the truth, you have a clean heart. Because you cannot have a clean heart until you have told yourself the truth about yourself. And that is why if the Christians will not go to heaven, even though they say they are Christians, if what makes you a Christian in this kingdom is your love for the truth. How much have you loved the truth to the extent of speaking to yourself the core heart truth? That is why it is by the truth that God judges us. That's why Jesus said, even me, I don't judge you, but the truth that I've spoken to you, that is what will judge you. It is the truth that he has spoken to us that will judge us. I want all of us to take a minute right now. Um, you, thank you. I want us all to take a minute. Maybe you need to write something down and get some assignment done. And maybe you do it now, maybe you do it later on. But I want you to be able to find some time, maybe now, a few minutes, where you just be on your own. We we'll shut out everything, shut out the world, shut out distractions, shut out everything, and just be alone with yourself, just one on one with yourself. And you know, you can never be alone with yourself. The invisible creator is with you all the time. And look into that mirror and say, what are those things that I've avoided talking about to myself? What are those things that I've avoided looking at myself in the face, in the eyes? What are those things that I'm afraid of admitting to myself? What are those things that I'm not willing to repent about? What are those things that I'm afraid of admitting? What are these things that I'm not willing to crumble about or be broken about am i ready what am i what are these things that i'm not ready to be broken about and i want you to get to a place where you'll be able to say god i'm just ready to be broken i'm ready to be totally i'm nothing i'm ready to empty myself i want to empty myself through the truth I want to look the truth in the face. I don't want to fall in love with the truth again. Father, help me to fall in love with the truth. Help me to love the truth. Help me to love you. You are the truth. Help me to look myself in the eyes. Help me to become transparent. Help me to become transparent. Help me to become, you know, visible so that to myself, so that I could see what is in the depth of my heart. 
Try me. Open my heart. Let me see what is there. Help me to bring out the dirt. Help me to bring out the, the ugly things. Help me to bring out the smelly things. Help me to bring out the horrible things. And maybe you need to write those things down. And, you know, and just ask God that, God, this is who I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is who I am now. This is my reality. This is who I am. This, I'm not better than this. I'm not a good, beautiful girl or be beautiful guy that everybody is admiring. I'm not the smile. I'm not the makeup. I'm not the hairstyle. I'm not the dress. I'm not the suit. I'm not the big name. I'm not the popular I'm whatever. I am just this to you, oh Lord. Receive me. Accept me. See me. Purify me. Try me. Look at me. This is who I am. And we all need to get to that place and never leave that place. That is what it means to be born again. That is what it means for me to be born again. That is what it means for me to be a Christian. And we all need to get there and never leave that place. Don't just get there one day and then you run away and then you never come back. This is the place you must live in every day. It's a place where you put your conscience into order. It's a place where you never part. This is where your personal relationship with God begins. That which I just told you to do now, talking truth to yourself, allowing yourself to be washed in the word of God, in the truth of God, allowing the truth of God to have dominion and, su and supremacy over you. That is what is called to have personal relationship with God. When you fall in love with the truth, when you fall in love with the truth, Jesus is that truth. He is the life, the, the way, the, tr the truth and the life. He is the truth. So fall in love with the truth, you fall in love with him. Be broken before the truth. Let the truth penetrate through your heart. Let the truth penetrate through your emotions. Let the truth penetrate through your thought processes. Let the truth penetrate through your, through your, through your ambitions. Let the truth penetrate through your visions. Let the truth penetrate through your, through your weaknesses. Let the truth penetrate through everything everything and just make sure and know that father there is nothing hidden from you and from me i am I'm, I'm ready to stand up to what who i am and what i am it doesn't mean that you are going to like everything you say but at least you can admit it to god almighty and you can admit it to yourself that this is me lord help me and it is only when you are able to look at yourself and speak the truth to yourself that is where you will discover that you need God for real. All of us, it doesn't matter what religion you belong to. It doesn't matter if you're Christian, Muslim, or atheist. If you could just look yourself and expose yourself to the truth, if you could just learn to speak the truth to yourself, my dear, you will discover that you need God. That you need God. That is what it means to be sincere that is what it means to be honest and there is no honest man that will not say he needs god you cannot say you don't believe in god and still be a honest person and even most people who go to church who are, who are elevating the church above everything is because they don't know the truth yet when you get to the place of truth church will not be the most important thing in your life anymore you will know that church has its place but it is it is the love of truth is what is supreme it when you get to the place of of knowing the truth and revealing and exposing yourself to the truth, religion will lose its grip on you. You will never be a slave to religion again. Religion will never command your life. Religion will never be your master anymore. You will never be a slave to religion again if you could just get to the place of truth and expose yourself to the truth and tell yourself that truth that is only truth that I need. The only thing that I desire is the truth. And truth get a hold of me, overwhelm me, and you will imagine yourself in the truth. You will never have any interest in deception. Deception will never be able to get a hold of you. Lies will never be able to get a hold of you. Demons will never be able to touch you because the truth has liberated you and has set you free. That is the first level of truth. That is the first level of truth, my dear. The first level of truth is the truth you speak to yourself about yourself. The truth you speak to yourself about yourself. The first level of truth, 
I'm going to give you five levels of truth. I've only given you one. The truth you tell to yourself about yourself. Second level of truth. Second level of truth. Are you interested in the second level of truth? Are you all interested in it? Mm -hmm. Se second level of truth is you tell the truth to yourself about other people. When you look at other people, you tell yourself the truth about them. Uh, Mrs. Nkiru, can you come here? Queen Nkiru. So, what is the second truth? I mean, the second level of truth. The second level of truth is you tell the tr you tell the truth to yourself about another. Most people who look at you, my dear, even especially men and women, they are looking at you because the last Saturday when you had a program with my work here, just because you are having short sleeve, some people were already complaining about that because people would rather complain and people would rather see the truth about other people rather than talk, talking to themselves about the truth, the truth about themselves and about others. But in this case, you remember it says the truth, the second level is the truth you tell the truth to yourself, not to another. Is you tell the first level of truth is you tell yourself the truth. The second level of truth is you tell yourself too. Only the difference is the first one you tell yourself the truth about yourself. The second one you tell the truth to yourself too about another to your neighbor about your neighbor. Because you know what I've discovered Christians do? And it's like, this is the Christianity that we know. And this attitude, we think is the truth, but it's not the truth. Because what we do is, we point fingers. But before you could talk to any other person at all, before you could even open your mouth, if it is the truth, that truth will first of all convince you. If it is the truth, that truth will first of all minister to you. If it, even if it is about another person, that truth must first of, is first of all meant for you. You know what most people will do? They will say, Pastor Sunday, tell that lady not to appear in program. Why should she dress like that? Why should she wear something like that? If she a Christian, she says, you know what that means? I am telling the truth in my own understanding, not to myself. I am jumping over myself to talk about another person that is called judgmental, that is called being judgmental, that is called judging another person. But it is no more the truth. It is condemnation. It is no more the truth. It is judgmental. It is no more the truth. It is not love anymore. And if it's not truth, it is not love. If I really love God, not even her, if I really love the truth, I will allow the truth that God is showing me about her to first of all minister to me. Even if God is showing me some truth about her, I will first of all let that truth change me. I will first of all be humble under that truth. I will first of all be broken under that truth. I will first of all be changed under that truth. I will first of all be transformed under that truth. I will not even think that I need to talk to her. It's until or I am changed already by that truth, or until I'm sure that I love her so much that I really want to help her change like I have changed. I really want the, that truth to help her like it has helped me. But for anybody that tells me each time, she's dressing like this, she's dressing like this, I know that they have not worked on themselves at the truth. Why should I be bothered about how she's dressing when before God, I am myself, even with dress or no dress, so I'm not perfect and I'm not holy. Be, if, how should I be worried about how she's dressed if her own dressing should remind me of my own imperfection? That's how it talks to you. The truth talks to you. If I want to condemn somebody and say, look at that dressing like, like, like that open arms, I should say, okay. What about me? I'm, I don't open arms, but am I perfect? Do I have my own issues? 
Is it? Am I thinking that she's promiscuous? What about me? I don't have. I have ish, secret issues. God forgive me. God forgive me. When by the time you get to that place, you forget about her because you are busy allowing God to talk to you yourself through another person about another person changing you through that. Because the truth is, maybe she is even. She might be dressing like that, but her heart might be much more cleaner than my own No, that don't dress. That's why God said, don't judge people by appearance. But I have already judged her by appearance, and God is judging me for my own heart. Because by even judging her, I'm already condemned. Even if I don't do anything evil. Again, nothing. I'm perfect in every other thing. Just by pointing and twisting finger at her and judging her, I'm already a sinner. I became a sinner automatically. Because anything that I see that I want to condemn in other people, first of all, must minister to me. Anything, the truth must first of all minister to me. The truth must first of all change me. Even if that truth belongs to another person, it must first of all change me. So the second level of truth, okay, the first level of truth is you tell the truth to yourself. This is the one you do in your personal relationship with God, you know, in your secret place where nobody else knows anything about it, but you tell the truth to yourself about yourself. Second level of truth, you tell the truth to yourself about another person that, ah, maybe this person is actually better than you. Maybe this person is not even is deeper than me. Maybe this person is not even thinking about it. It's just like sometimes, you know, uh, I hug somebody. Maybe I hug her or I got some. Somebody goes, oh, ah, you are the one thinking like that. I'm the one thinking that, like that. Maybe, really, this person is not even thinking like that. Any sinful thing. I am the one who has problem. I don't know if you are getting it. You know, by me thinking evil, by me thinking anything bad, it means in my mind, it's in my head. I am the one who has problem. So, the second level of truth is when you yourself Speak the truth to yourself about other people. And the best way to speak truth to yourself about other people is to think the best thing out of other people. Because the reason why we condemn other people is because we are not seeing them as a minister of God to us. But if you love the truth, you will be seeing everybody as a means of blessing and ministration to you. The only thing you want to look at other people for is, first of all, what you want God, what, you, what is God trying to say through them to you? Mean? What is God trying to show me through them? What is God trying to teach me through them? How does God want to change me through them? What does she know to do better than I do? What does she know that I don't know? What can I learn from her? You know, wh where is she? You know, where, what is it in her that I need to discover? Even when she is doing something bad or is doing something bad, I must say, this thing is doing bad. God help me so that I will not do it. Or help me, deliver me from it. Or help me with what I am doing bad. The things that I am doing bad, God help me perfect. And even, even a killer. You should look at that killer or murderer and say, Ah, oh, Father, have mercy upon, just like you had mercy upon me. You forgave me. You had mercy upon me. Please have mercy upon him. Uh, this person, that, that thing that that thing has done, Father, help me. How can I become better? Maybe so that I will never do something like that. Or how can I help people who do things like this? You speak the truth. Not to her first. That's another level. When you get to speak to her. But you speak to yourself about her, about the truth that her life and her actions are teaching you. No man here. Yeah. Okay. You are there. Yeah. Don't worry. You know, re recently, even today, I saw some pictures of what they call jungle justice in Nigeria. And I'm going to call it. I'm going to show you. Huh? I'm going to show you. It says here, 
this is somebody saying this while are in the church today these two small thieves no these two small thieves passed through my gate and opened the window opened the window trying to enter through it and was caught in the process i am sending them to the other side of the world now and those two kids is about they're about 10 years old or 12 years old you see tire on their neck they were killed right there burned to death now who is this person who is writing this this is a member of parliament of nigeria honorable sunday bring the lower the, yeah honorable sunday abo from benway state this is a representative this is somebody that is elected by these same people by the parents of these kids they were elected these people uh, these people elected him to the parliament and because they are trying to get into his house but why were they trying to get to his house in the first place because they have need they wanted to steal food these people were trying to eat so they were going to steal because they saw that he has a fence he has a big house he's rich because we have never been taught in our country to speak truth to ourselves about ourselves and we've never been taught in our country to speak truth to ourselves if we're about treating thieves like this if we're about other people to the life of these thieves should be talking to me the life of these robbers should be talking to me what does god want to tell me through this arm robber what does god want to tell me through these thieves thank you you are crying pastor coin come here you are so broken by this exam. First of all, these are kids. Yes. And nobody taught them. That is why they are where they are today. Yes. And secondly, there is a movement that's been going on that we should speak up for evil. Against evil. Against evil. But I still see a lot of men of God still use the word of the Lord to, you know. To kill people. Just to kill people. To, to murder people. To think that they are speaking justice. To think that they are protecting, I don't know, Christianity or whatever. But this is somebody that say he is from the church and he believes that it is God that made him catch these thieves and he had the gods to burn him and still say he represents Christ. This is just a replica of what is going on now in my city because he's spoken that there is a prostitution of tithe and offering. Every man of God in that city is now crazy because they believe that their bread has been taken away from them. But they don't want to embrace the truth. And it makes me so sad. Because I've been reading these things and I don't know, we need to, if we don't do this, this is how our generation will end up. Nobody will speak for them. Nobody, you know, we, we see evil just before our eyes and we still deny it and say, where is it written in the Bible? It makes me so sad. Can't we see anymore? What is wrong with us Christians? Nobody is denying the truth in Christianity, but how do we do Christianity today? Where is his Christ? He professes Christ that Christ is his blood, he's just coming from the church, and he's burning kids alive. When he's in the parliament to even be a voice for those kids, that he would have been the one to change their lives, but he didn't do anything. Just say reaching his family and building six meter walls around his house. He was, he was supposed to take them in and feed them and give them some money. Please hold it again. Okay, see what this guy wrote here. I, while I was, I, why in the church today? What kind of, is that not a testimony to how, what the kind of church that we are practicing? For me, this is an indictment against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because while he's on his way to church, he actually passed by, by, uh, passed by those kids. He, he saw hungry kids on his way to church. He saw hungry parents on his way to church. But he was going to church. Because he thought going to church is serving God. He has not listened to my message. Or he doesn't believe in the message that I preach. Which says you cannot serve God without serving people. You only serve God by serving people. So all the church going to church is not, is not Christianity. Oh. If your definition of, go, of, of church is go, of Christianity is going to church, you have missed the road. These are some of the truth we have to speak to ourselves. <laughs>
These are some of the truth we have to speak to ourselves. It's because the first level of truth is to is it speak to ourselves about the truth. It's the truth we speak to ourselves. We as a nation, we have to speak the truth to ourselves. We as a church, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to begin to speak the truth to ourselves. So the truth is that if we, if we are really practicing Christianity, if we are really practicing the real church, we, there will not be these children out there. These children would not have been there. These children would not have been suffering what they are suffering. These children would not have become armed robbers. These children would not have been so hungry. These children would not have had the need to go and rob his home if he has given them scholarship. We are not even asking him to use his own money to give them scholarship. If he has used the money of the government that the, we, our, our parliamentarians receive more money than any other than any other parliament in the world. If that money alone has been used to take care of these kids, they wouldn't have become armed robbers trying to break into his house. But he is saying he's a Christian. What we have to question ourselves, what kind of Christianity do we practice? Uh, I'm sorry. What kind of Christianity do we all practice? Is it Christianity we practice that we bypass people? You remember the story of the Good Samaritan? The Good Samaritan story is talking about the fact that the priest bypass. It is not what he's going to do in this church that matters. It is noticing a human being that is in need that matters. The Levite bypassed. It is not what the Levite is going to do in the building that matters. It is what he is supposed to be doing every day to fellow human being that matters. You cannot love God without loving people. You cannot serve God without serving people. You cannot worship God without noticing people. That is what we are seeing right here. So why I was in church and God had to make it happen that it was when he was in church that this, two ha this thing happened. He's talking, he's saying these two small thieves. But those are human beings. He has labeled them. And there's another one. He has labeled them. He has given them a false identity. That these small thieves, he, he, you know, he has labeled them. Why should he label them thieves? That is what they did. That is what they did wrong. But that is not their identity. They are not thieves by birth. God didn't create them to be thieves. We created them to be thieves because of our, our ignore. By ignoring him, oh, stigmatized, that's what I was looking for. We, they have stigmatized them by giving them the name thieves. But they are not thieves. If you could just resolve their problem and reach out to them, they will no more be thieves. But to them, they are no more human beings. Why did they burn those kids? Alive, these small children. Why did they burn them? Why did they condemn them? Why did they burn them to death? These small children. Why should they be born alive? Why should they be born alive? I tell you, they were born alive because they don't see them as human beings again. They are no more looking at them as kids anymore. They are no more seeing them as all people's children any longer. They are not seeing them as thieves. You see, this is my people who are ruling my country. His spelling is even wrong. This is supposed to be two, two, these two. He's supposed to be these. C H E S E. That is the member of parliament. He himself is illiterate. We could, we could also label him as illiterate if that is the case. But that doesn't matter. But he born two, he said there are two thieves. And so he's going to send them to the other side. But he's a murderer. For us, <laughs> he's no more saying that these people too, as small as they are, and as guilty as they are. I know they are guilty. Yes, they are guilty. But they are still God's image. They are still made in God's image. They are still made in God's image. When we don't tell ourselves the truth that even the criminal is made in God's image. Even the murderer is made in God's image. Everybody is made in God's image and we must begin to recognize them as such. But when we just label people by what they have done, by actions alone, then we too should have been condemned. And he is proud to say, I am sending them to the other side of the world now. I'm sending them to the other side. And you see the National Assembly? You see the Nigerian flag behind him? This is Nigerian flag right there. This is the Nigerian flag. 
and that is the Nigerian uh, coat of arm right here with him, beside him. These are the rulers of our nation. And he's a, become a murderer. I personally believe this guy should be sentenced. He must be prosecuted. He must be taken to court. I mean, I call upon all the civil rights movement in Nigeria and the lawyers. They must charge this guy to court. He must be charged for, as a murderer. And all those boys that are there, that are behind, they are the same poor people who burn these guys.